the agenda for comparing two binomial parameters with equal ends per group is follows. We're going to set up the hypothesis test. We're going to look at the distribution of the test statistic under the null and alternative, which is important for calculating power and sample size. And then we're going to illustrate these principles in R. So our data follows two binomial distributions. We have X1 with the sample size of N and X2 with the sample size of N each following uh, binomials. We want to test are these two population parameters equal. Are they equal or are they different? Now the test statistic is this where we take the difference of our estimates of our proportions divided by some variance um, and under the null where the two proportions are equal, so P1 and P2 are equal, you can combine that into this, where I just use P hat and Q hat. Now notice I don't put a P1 or P2 or Q1 or Q2 like these variables, and I'll show you that in a second. Now this equality is under the null. So under the, under the alternative, we'll use this test statistic. Under the null, we'll use this. So our estimates for P1 and P2 hat when we're conducting the test is just the sample means or the number of events we observe divided by N and that's an estimate of the proportion up here. Um, N's a sample size. Now this test is sort of interesting that its variance depends upon the two parameters that we're trying to estimate which these are called nuisance parameters and we have what do we do we have to estimate them somehow so here here's the two common approaches to estimate the estimates and the variance okay meaning the p hat or q hat um, if we're conducting the sample size i mean if we're conducting the test so we're not worried about power or sample size we use the sample estimates we use our sample to estimate these two parameters but when we're calculating power or sample size needed to achieve a certain power, we use the, uh, the P1 and P2 estimates under our alternative hypothesis. And I'll illustrate that in a minute. But this is what R uses in the power.prop.test and, uh, and, and that's what it uses. So in Q is always one minus P. So under the null hypothesis, the test statistic, remember this is that common an estimate of the, uh, the variance or the proportions, is normal 0, 1. Under the alternative, it is, um, it's not a zero parameter, it's this. It's the P1 minus P2 over its uh, uh, standard deviation with, uh, that's the mean and then the standard deviation of this distribution is one. But he, here's one note, is when you're calculating power and sample size, somehow the, the distribution under the alternative should shift or make itself more over the rejection region somehow. So when we calculate that area, that's power. Um, so this uh, can be written, note this is a fraction, so you can invert and multiply and then this square root of n goes to the top. And I write it like this just to illustrate that when we increase n, this mean gets bigger and bigger or negative depending upon what's that, but it gets larger in some magnitude. So this distribution shifts and shifts and shifts over the alternative region, which is, is one way to increase power. And the other is to make this difference between the two parameters, what we're trying to find larger but usually you make N bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, so now let me illustrate these in R. Okay, here we're in R, and I'm on an Ubuntu Linux-based machine, and we're going to test two sample binomial tests. And we're going to compare the, the binomial proportions. Are they equal or are they not? Is P1 equal to P2 or are they not? Now let's illustrate this. We're going to pick a sample size of 30, uh, alpha 0.05, and we're going to plot this. And I'm going to plot it in, in sort of a two-frame environment. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, 
Oh, this is a neat little trick. Multiple figures for row. I want two rows, one column. So it's going to create two rows and one column. So I want to plot the the uh, the density of the P1 minus P2 values. So our test statistic approaches normality. Um, and this is what it approaches. And so to shade in the rejection region, we would do this. We would find the areas such the tells are alpha over 2 or 0 0.025. And if our, we can, you know, we uh, calculate our test statistic if it falls in here or here, we reject. Now to calculate the alternative distribution, we have to pick values that make the null false or the alternative true. So let's pick um, P1.5 and P2.3. And then we'll put them in a, a variable called P1 and P2. And Q1 is always 1 minus P1. And P Q2 is 1 minus Q2. Now to estimate the common proportion under the null, we're going to just take the average of those two P's and then Q. And then we'll plot that line. And so this is the distribution under the null hypothesis. Um, and I don't think I said it in my in the previous section, but the distribution of our test, test statistic limits to a normal. It's not exactly normal, but it follows pretty closely. Now to find power, we want to find the area above the reject or under the curve above the rejection regions. And so let's plot that in green and look at it. And now you can see this green and there's a little thin green line which you probably won't be able to see so those two combined are power um, and this isn't much it's not even over 50 percent so we you know, we will need to increase the sample size but this this is in the p minus one p one minus p two world now in the textbooks everything is is sort of phrased in terms of the Z statistic or the standard normal curve. So let's plot th what's going on there to illustrate. So this is the standard normal curve, mean zero, variance one. And, and let's take this null distribution and map it down. So we shade the appropriate regions here. And so each one is alpha over two. And then our transform test statistic, you know, if it falls in the rejection region reject and now this curve under the alternative when it's mapped down this area here corresponds to this shaded region so this region becomes this and so you see power in terms of a z curve and, and you always kind of wonder why but everything is sort of being mapped from here to here and back and forth and anyway this is what it ends up being um, let's calculate power under this setting and, and the, the function in R is power.prop.test so we're going to plug in 30.5.2 we want to find power and we have about 35 percent power now to do it in first principles we use the P norm and the Q norm function P is the cumulative distribution function. Q norm is a quantile function. And so here you have to plug in the 0.05 uh, area. And since we're calculating to the right, it's 1 minus alpha over 2. That's the cutoff value. Anyway, we find that. And then we find the area under the left curve. And we add them. And we come up with the same power. So this is how to do it in first principles. So now let's use power.prop.test to calculate Power, the need of sample size to achieve a certain power. So here we set everything the same, P1 and P2, but we put a power of 0.8 and we calculate or we use that function, we run it and it says we need 93 observations. So now let's calculate that using first principles. Let's put N equal to 93 and then calculate the area under the right curve and then the left and then add them together and indeed it is just over 80 percent power. So that's how you use power.prop.test in R and, and, and get a little background of what's going on behind the scenes. I uh, hope you enjoyed it.